In the mid-1970s, American dermatologist Thomas Fitzpatrick developed a numerical classification scale to categorize the different skin color types that humans can have. The scale ultimately breaks down the skin of humans into six different scores, with low numbers corresponding to lighter skin and high numbers corresponding to darker skin. The scale can also be used to describe how skin with different levels of pigment will react to sun exposure. Type 1 skin is the palest. Type 1 skin never tans. It goes right from being undamaged to being burned. It's all or nothing. If someone has type 1 skin, they know it. They tend to keep covered up when out in the sun. Type 2 skin is just a touch darker, but it's still quite pale. It can sometimes tan just a little bit though. It'll typically go from being undamaged to being burned fairly readily. Type 3 skin is a little bit darker still. It responds to the sun in a different way. It can still burn, but most often type 3 skin will tan quite readily. You get the idea. Types 4, 5, and 6 skin are progressively darker. They will minimally burn, rarely burn, or almost never burn. Types 4 and 5 will both tan quite readily, whereas type 6 skin technically can sometimes tan, though it might not be noticeable because the skin is already quite dark. Now, a sunburn is an immune response. When skin cells get exposed to the sun, the skin cell DNA can be subjected to harmful UV radiation. That radiation causes cell damage, DNA damage, and mutations. The redness and pain of that burn, that's due to the inflammatory reaction that's stimulated from the sun. It's the body's immune system responding to cell damage. A massive amount of apoptosis or cell self-destruction is initiated to eliminate cells that are critically damaged. And the peeling skin after a sunburn, that's sheets of skin cells that needed to be destroyed after being severely damaged by the UV radiation. All right, fair enough. So what about a suntan? What's going on with the skin cells that causes the skin to darken following sun exposure? Well, let's take a look. Today we're talking about sun tanning. Tanning occurs when skin cells are stimulated to produce an increased amount of the dark pigment eumelanin. Eumelanin is the key molecule that's responsible for the different skin colors that humans have. And yeah, when skin cells are exposed to UV solar radiation, their eumelanin production can often be kicked into overdrive, depending on the skin type. To produce eumelanin, it all starts with the amino acid molecule tyrosine. Special skin cells called melanocytes can convert tyrosine into eumelanin using specialized organelles called melanosomes. Now, there are only a few key enzymes that are directly involved in this process. Tyrosinase is an example of such an enzyme. It interacts with the tyrosine and helps to convert it, ultimately, into eumelanin. Now, categorically speaking, Ramping up the amount of eumelanin in the skin, like what we see with a tanning response, can only happen in one of two ways. First, the effectiveness of key enzymes like tyrosinase can be improved as a response to sun exposure. If tyrosinase is more effective, then more pigment would be produced, all else being equal. Second, there are certain enzymes, we'll call them accessory enzymes, that are needed for the manufacturing of key enzymes like tyrosinase. If those accessory enzymes can be stimulated by UV radiation from the sun, then they can impact the amount of tyrosinase that's made. In this particular scenario, it's not about making tyrosinase more effective. Instead, it's simply about making more of it. More tyrosinase would likely mean more eumelanin production. So, Let's take a look at those two different avenues. First, we'll look at how sun exposure can make the key enzyme tyrosinase more effective. As UV radiation bombards a skin cell, it damages that skin cell's membrane. This causes a molecule called diacylglycerol, or DAG, to be released from the membrane of whatever skin cells are affected. 
DAG stimulates the production of an enzyme called protein kinase. In this case, it's PKC. PKC will activate the tyrosinase enzyme. You see, every time the tyrosinase enzyme molecule is engaged in the eumelanin production pathway, that particular tyrosinase enzyme molecule will get deactivated. Essentially, it loses two phosphates that help drive the eumelanin building process. Well, when a deactivated tyrosinase enzyme interacts with the enzyme PKC, the PKC will reactivate it. Activated tyrosinase will then re-kickstart the eumelanin pigment-producing pathway. So, lots of sun means lots of available diacylglycerol, or DAG, which results in lots of PKC production, which then goes on to reactivate any deactivated tyrosinase, which results in increased eumelanin production and a tanning response. All right, so what's the second way? Well, to make more of the tyrosinase enzyme, there would have to be an increase in the rate at which the tyrosinase gene is transcribed, which is the first step in enzyme production. The DNA is transcribed into a molecule called mRNA, and that mRNA is then translated into a protein. And in this case, we're talking about the tyrosinase enzyme, which is a protein. So how does sun exposure make that happen? As UV radiation damages cell structures and cellular molecules, it stimulates the production of an enzyme called proopiomelanocortin, or POMC. POMC can get broken apart into different hormones. One of those hormones activates a transmembrane protein called MC1R, or the melanocortin-1 receptor. When MC1R is activated, it stimulates the production of a molecule called cyclic adenosine monophosphate, or CAMP, which, when abundant, causes an increase in the transcription of the tyrosinase gene. This results in a higher concentration of the tyrosinase enzyme, which leads to an increased eumelanin production level and a tanning response. Now, what about people with type 1 skin that just doesn't tan? I mean, this isn't a case where the skin just needs the right amount of sunscreen. Some skin actually can't tan in a biological sense. The skin burns, but never tans. So what's going on there? In many instances of type 1 skin, the MC1R gene is faulty, if you will. It produces a non-functional MC1R protein. If the MC1R protein isn't functioning, then not only will no eumelanin be produced as a tanning response, but essentially no eumelanin can be produced at all. So, pale skin, that's biologically unable to tan. Now, what about type 6 skin on the other end of the spectrum? This is skin where the eumelanin production is already ramped up. So since a near maximal amount of pigment is already being produced, extra sun exposure typically doesn't result in extra eumelanin production in this case. Not to mention the fact that a high concentration of eumelanin can protect skin cells from cellular damage as a result of UV exposure. And that's something that otherwise would typically stimulate a tanning response. So tanning, the color of skin, it's all about eumelanin, how much gets produced, and whether the sun can stimulate any extra production. For a more in-depth view of the pigment-producing pathway, be sure to check out the cell biology video in this series. In the meantime, regardless of the type of skin that you have, it's probably not a bad idea to make sure that you take appropriate precautionary measures to protect your cells from harmful UV radiation that shines down on us from above. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.